Book of Luke chapter 8. How many of you have your Bibles? Amen. Praise God. All right. Now make sure it's King James, because that's the only inspired version. No, I'm just kidding. I'm oh, just no. kidding. I'm just kidding. Y'all know what the NIV stands for, right? Non-inspired version. That's what it's oh, on. <laughs> there are some people like that that believe that. But the King James is the only uh, true Bible. Yeah, true. But uh, we use the New King James, amen, I, I have all of them in my house. I have the NIV, the NLT, the Amplified. I have like over 30 translations on my computer. So uh, I read them all, amen. So uh, we just use the, the reason why I use the King James, uh, New King James or the King James, because mainly every church in town uses that. So you'll never go wrong with the King James Bible, amen. So uh, I want everybody to say amen. 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 Say it again, say amen. 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 Say it one more time. Amen. 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 Pastor Larry, why did they why did they say that when you preach? Why do people say amen when you preach? Because I agree with the Bible says, yeah, let me preach, brother, let me preach. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> They're agreeing with you. The Bible says that Abraham believed God and God made him righteous. The word believe there, Melissa, actually means amen. So Abraham amened God and he was made righteous. When you say amen in church to something that I say, you know what you're saying? I believe that. Or I receive that as mine. If I'm talking about healing, about God being a healer and you're sick, you know what you need to say? Amen. amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. amen. There you go. Amen. amen. Learn to say amen. That's why we say amen in church. So next time somebody says amen, and now you know what it means. What When you pray, you say in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Why do you say amen? Because, Lord, whatever I just prayed to you, let it be. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Well, that's why I want y'all to learn to say amen when I'm preaching. Amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> Luke chapter 8. I did a message. If you ever want to hear it, I did a message on the power of the amen. I taught a whole lesson on what, why we say amen and all on a Sunday morning. So Luke chapter 8, verse 22 through 25. You're going to be blessed this morning. I really believe this is going to bless y'all and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. It says, Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and the windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Verse 24. And they came to him awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying one to another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Amen. Y'all see that, church? Amen. 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 The Bible says that the people, that God's disciples, here they are, chilling with Jesus, chillaxing, if we can say it, y'all you young folks, chillaxing with Jesus. And what happens? Jesus tells them, let's go into the boat. Let's go to the other side. And what, is, and what do they do? They, they're obedient to the Lord. They get in the boat, they cross, they're getting rid, they think that they're going to the other side, and what happens? A storm arises. And Jesus is over there just, he's hibernating. He's asleep. What I wanted to do this morning, because I didn't want to get out of bed. <laughs> Jesus was sleeping on the boat. And the storm is raging. And the Bible says that what? His disciples, they start getting fearful. Their life, the Bible says right here that, that the, 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 the uh, boat began to fill with water and they were in jeopardy. They felt troubled. They felt they, were gonna, they weren't going to make it. The Bible says Jesus rises up, wakes up. And what happens? He calms the storm. What do you do, church, when you find yourself in a storm, but yet you know you've been obedient to the Lord? The title of my message today is, When Obedience Leads to a Storm. When Obedience Leads to a Storm. Pastor Larry, you talked about this on Facebook. Mm, I did, but not all of it. 
the disciples, notice what they did. They were doing exactly what the Lord wanted them to do, Lori. But yet they found themselves in a storm. Mm -hmm. the, 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 they were doing exactly what did Jesus said. What did he say? Let's go to the other side. Mm -hmm. Let's cross over. See, many of you in this church, and many of you that just now started coming, you got water baptized last week. And you know what you're saying to yourself? Pastor Larry, I'm a believer. I love the Lord. I pray. I don't come on Thursday nights, but I listen on Thursday nights at home with the football game on the, on the background. <laughs> and, but Larry, I'm obedient to the Lord. I, I, I strive to live for the Lord. I, I, I try to live for Him and to please Him. But why is it that I find myself in a storm? You ever ask that? God, I, I'm doing everything I know to do. And why are you allowing me to go through this? Why is my loved one that I love having to go through something like this? Why are my finances suffering when I give faithfully to my church? Why am I battling sickness and disease, Lord, when I know that I serve you? And I believe in you. Church, we've all been there. Amen, somebody? Amen. We've all asked those Amen. questions. I don't care how spiritual you are. Let's, begin, let's get real this morning. Amen. We've all asked those questions in of, of ourselves. Maybe not out of your mouth, but in your heart. You've asked the Lord. Yeah. What happened? What, what, what happened to the joy that I used to feel when I first came to church? I don't feel that joy anymore. But let me tell you something, church. The Bible said that Jesus said in this life... You will have tribulation. Oh, man. Yeah. Jesus said that you will have tribulation. But he said, but don't let your heart be troubled. He said, for I have overcome the Amen. world. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Your Christian walk is not going to be a bed of roses. Amen. I remember that I, I had been living for the Lord for a long time already. I was going to church. I was speaking in tongues. Baptized in the Holy Spirit by speaking in tongues. I, I, I would cry. I would read my Bible. But yet I always kept having dizzy spells and dizzy spells and dizzy spells. And, and my doctor told me one day, she says, you keep coming back too often. I'm starting to get worried about you. And she said, I want you to have an MRI done. She said, I'm going to uh, put in that you need to have an MRI. And, I, and I, I said, well, why? And she said, because you might have a tumor. Now, you don't want to hear that, Brother Richard. Because then you know what the devil does? He uses that and he starts putting fear in your heart. Yes. Right. Well, maybe it's cancerous. Maybe I'm going to die. And you know what? I remember I was in a Wednesday night. I was in a Wednesday night service. And they, and they do just the way we did here. They opened the front up for prayer. And then, and then I was the first one up there. And you know what, Brother Edward? When they prayed for me, I started getting, I, that dizzy spell just hit me. But it was like a tornado, if I can say it. It, it hit me, Brother Edward. They were all praying for me. But I was saying, God, today is my day. Today I'm going to get free from this. And you know what, Melissa? As they were praying for me, I started getting dizzy, but it just lifted. Amen. And Mary, I never had the dizziness ever again. Amen. And they ran the MRI and didn't find anything wrong with me. And I've never been back to the doctor for that ever again. Don't tell me God is not a healer. Amen, somebody. Amen. What am I telling you? It doesn't matter how faithful you are to the Lord. You're going to find yourself in a storm. Amen. And even in your obedience, amen. storms will rise in your life. Yes, amen. Let me tell you something. Being a Christian is not the absence of a storm. But it's having peace and knowing who you serve in the amen. midst of the storm. Yes, that's it. Amen. Oh, I wrote that one down. Because the Lord gave it to me. Good. I'm going to say it again. Being a Christian is not the absence of a storm. But having peace and knowing who you serve in the midst of the storm. Yes. You've got to know who you serve, church. Amen. you got to know that God that created all things is greater than the storm. Amen. Pastor Larry, what do I do? When I find myself, and I'm going to give you four things that I want you to do when you find yourself in the midst of the storm. Tell the person next to you, say, listen to what Pastor's going to say. Listen to what Pastor's going to say. 
Because he's going to help you when you go through that problem next time. Are you all ready? Remember? And I'm going to use this scripture. I'm just going to use this story. And I'm going to show you what the Lord showed me. Look at, look at Luke chapter 8 again that we read. Look at verse 22. It says, Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said unto them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. The first thing you need to do when you find yourself in a storm is listen and trust in his word. Look what it says. Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Let's go over to the other side. Jesus, God in flesh, the God-man. For all you Bible scholars, the hyperstatic union of God, that's what the, the Bible uses the word, is God, is both God and both man, all in one. Do you believe, church, that God was telling you to do something and put you in danger? No. No. But do you think that if God put, that if, that if there's a storm arises in the midst of your obedience, that he already knows it's going to arise? Yes. yes. And what do you have to do? Believe his word. That's it. All you have to do, church, is hold on to what Jesus says. That's the number one thing you need to do. When you find yourself in a storm, stop focusing on the storm. Amen. And say, Lord, I know I'm in the midst of a storm, but you told me to do this, and I'm going to do it. Amen. Because let me tell you something. When you take that first step, like Peter did, on the water, you know what happens? You start getting scared. Mm -hmm. Because you start seeing the wind blow. And it starts thunder, and it starts lightning. And you know what you do? You probably say, did I miss the Lord? I've done that. Maybe, maybe I need to go back to my prayer closet. <laughs> and make sure I really heard from the Lord. Because I don't think this is the Lord. Because all hell is breaking loose. <laughs> no, you know what you do? You hold on to his word. Amen. And you believe what he says. If Jesus says you're a healer, what are you going to do? Believe it. Yes. If Jesus says you're an overcomer, what are you going to do? Believe, believe it. it. Yes. If Jesus says you're the head and not the tail, what are you going to do? Believe, believe it. it. If Jesus says you're not cursed but you're blessed, what are you going to do? Believe, believe it. it. The disciples just believed what Jesus said. Think about this, church. They seen him walk on water. Right. Raise the dead, RJ. Yeah. Heal the sick. Yeah. Make people's crippled arms grow. Yeah. Make the dumb to speak, the Bible says. And they just, I, I mean, if it would have been me, I would have done the same thing. Jesus said, get in the boat, we're going to the other side, I'm getting in. Why? Because you believe in the Master. Amen. You believe in what He says. Isaiah 55, verse 11. Look what it says on the screen. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return void to me, but it will accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. What is it saying? What is, what is Isaiah saying here? That when the Lord says something, you can take it to the bank and the check won't bounce back. Hallelujah. The moment, listen to me, the moment that the Lord decreed out of his mouth that they were going to go to the other side, church, they were going to go to the other side. Amen. Are you with me? If Jesus said he's going to bless your life, there's no deacon nor devil that can change that. Amen. There's no pastor that can change that. Amen. Amen. I don't care what anybody says. Let me give you an example. How many of you as parents... Mothers, fathers in this room. Maybe you didn't do the best raising your children. Maybe when you were young, you were rebellious. And have you ever heard that old saying? That's all right. When you have your kids, oh, yeah. they're going to be bad. Yeah. And you know what you started doing? You don't tell nobody, but you, you cry yourself to sleep. And you say, oh, I'm going through this because I treated my mom bad. And I cussed my mom out, and I snuck out of the house. That's why my daughter's sneaking out of the house. That's why I'm a grandma at 30 years old. Because of all these things. You know what you do? 
You start believing the lies of what people tell you. Man. Instead of believing what the Lord tells you. Because let me tell you something. I don't care how rebellious you were when you were young. You are a Christian now. And old things have passed away. Oh, and behold, all things have become new. And let me tell you something. Don't let nobody bring something from under the blood. Amen. I'm going to say it again. Don't let anybody bring something from underneath the blood. Right. Because, Brother Richard, when the blood washes it away, it is gone. That's it. Amen. Only people that live in the past are, are people that bring things up and say, Well, I know you're a Christian, but do you remember what you used to do? God doesn't do that, church. God gives us and says, You know what? No, you're the head now, Brother RJ. Every mistake you've done is gone. Amen. And I'm going to raise you up as a king, Amen. as a priest, yes. as a queen in my kingdom. Amen, somebody. Amen. I don't care if you were a drunk, an alcoholic, whatever you were, a drug addict, a fornicator, whatever it was, you are no longer those things anymore. Amen. Are you with me? Because God has made you new in him. Amen. So when he says something, believe it. When he decrees it, believe it. <clears throat> Whose word? And what are you building your life on? Are you, are you, listen, everybody, when the news comes on, they believe what the news says. Like last week, some of y'all were like, are we still going to baptize? Because it's raining. Mary Alice was one of them. <laughs> Not, but I'm just, that's a joke. That's a bad. I'm just saying, because I was the same way. And my grandma called me. Larry, are we going to baptize? I said, we going to baptize. Well I, did, well, I told her, I said, you know, Grandma, I said, anything can happen in between in between praise and worship, but let's just kind of see what happens. And hey, the Lord cleared it up. Amen. Amen. Mosquitoes and all, but we were able to baptize. Amen. <laughs> but church, what are you building your life on? See, you listen to the news and you believe the news. If the newsman says it's going to rain, most of you are going to take your umbrellas to work. Why? Because you believe the newsman. Why is it that you can you can build your life on what the newsman says, the weatherman, but you cannot build your life on what God has said? Well, can I get a good amen, somebody? We build our, our we build our lives on what our, our family tells us. Family is good. I love family. Family is very important to me. And a lot of you in here are family to me. Even though we're not blood kin. When we're blood, don't get spiritual now. I'm not even going to say, we all had the blood of Jesus. I'm talking about that. I, I said, we're not all blood kin, natural blood kin. Yeah, that's right. Says family over there. You my kin folk over there. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, church? Listen to me. Even though you have family, you need to sometimes weed out the people in your life that start feeding you negativity that's in your right. family. And you know what you have to do? You have to love them from a distance. That's right. Right. Right because amen. you know what? They're poison amen. to you. Yes. Oh, can I get a good amen? Amen. 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 You love family, but some family got to love from a distance. That's right. amen. amen. Let me tell you something. You, let, let me tell you something. The only person you're responsible for is yourself. That's that's right. Right. And the only well-being of spiritual... The only well-being spiritual person you're supposed to be worried about is yourself. Amen. Amen. You're responsible Amen. for the nourishment and for the and for the food that you eat that comes from the Lord. You cannot help what everybody else does. Right. You worry about yourself. And let me tell you something. If somebody's trying to poison you, you have to push that plate away and say, you know what, I'm not going to have it no more. Amen. Amen. See, we build, our, we build our life on what friends say. Yes. Girl, I know your husband's mm -hmm. cheating. Because my husband used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> he don't answer his phone, girl. You better go find out where he's at. <laughs> oh, come on, y'all. You got it? Yeah. yeah. We start building our life on those things. Your friends. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have very many friends. As far as friends, friends, I don't have very many. Jamie's probably my only friend. As far as a good, good friend that I've had for me and Jamie have been friends since we were in high school. That was over 10 years ago, help me, Jesus. I'm getting old. <laughs> I'm 30 already. That was over 10 years ago. But the reason why I, the reason why I don't have many friends, because many friends don't like my life. They want to drink and party and talk about sex and sleeping with girls. I want to talk about Jesus. Amen. I want to worship him. 
I want to magnify him. Do you know that Jesus had hundreds of disciples? And then he had 12 disciples, right? But who were the closest to him? Do you know there was only three of them? Out of the 12, there was only three. That were close to him. You know why? Because you can't allow everybody into your inner circle. That's right. Some people you have to keep at arm's length. That's right. Man, I'm preaching really good. Y'all need to be listening. Hallelujah. Because you ain't called to be friends with everybody. That's right. That's right. You don't need to have best friends with everybody you come in contact with. Come on. Amen. There's some people you just can't share things with. That's right. Because you know what? They're the litter news. And it'll be all over town. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. But then you have those close people in your life that you can pour your heart out to. Amen, somebody. Amen. Don't listen to me. Don't not believe everybody that says they're a friend to you. Because they're not. Amen. Amen. They're a friend to you in your face, but they're a snake behind your back. Amen. I've been there. I've had it happen to me. People that I love. I had a person that I have that I consider was a, almost a best friend to me. I text them. I haven't seen them in over a year. We had a little fallout. And so I text them. They had a new number, so they didn't have my number. So I text them, I said, hey, how are you doing? Who is this? They were texting quick back and forth. Who is this? I said, well, you tell me. And they, well, no, you tell me. I said, come on, yes. And they started laughing. No, come on, you tell me. And then I said, it's me, Larry. Never heard back from them after that. <laughs> <laughs> what does that tell you? Some people don't want to be your friends. And you know what? I know we're losing no sleep. Because you know what? I really believe I've heard it said. I'm not the originator of this. But there's some people that God puts in your life only for a season. And when their season is up, you got to move on with your life. Amen. I'm not talking about your marriage now and your husband. That's for eternity. Amen. Marriage is for eternity. I'm talking about friends. We believe what the doctor says. Oh, Pastor Larry, the doctor said, I am dying. Uh, I'm sick. But what does God say? That's right. Oh, Amen. But what does God say? That's right. Hallelujah. What does his word say? Oh, the government <laughs> says this economy is gonna collapse. We're going down. Not God's people. Right. God's people will never go down. Amen. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. How many of you are righteous? Amen. Okay, let me try it again. How many of you are righteous? Amen. Okay. The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Amen. And the Bible says we are the seed of Christ. We are the offspring of Christ. Amen. So you know what? I'll never be forsaken and I'll never go without food. Amen. I, I can't because I love to eat. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But you know what, church? God will provide for you. I don't care what the government does. Amen. I will, I've been reading through my Bible from beginning to end. <laughs> I told y'all this Thursday night. I, I started reading. I have like a reading chart that I printed up on my computer. And I'm, I'm reading the Bible from beginning to end for like the hundredth time already. And I was no, I told Brother Edward. Brother Edward texted me because he's been making sure I've been staying faithful to my diet. Which he hasn't been being faithful to. <laughs> Last week he had two coning meals from Sonic. Come on. <laughs> Father, forgive him for he know not what he do. Amen. <laughs> And Brother Edward said, what are you reading? I told Brother Edward, uh, he said, what are you doing, Pastor Larry? I said, I'm reading, which I was. I was reading. And he said, what is the Lord showing you? And I said, Brother Edward, I said, the Lord is showing me as I was reading the story of the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. You know what it says, Brother Richard, mm -hmm. that I never noticed? It says that when God was pouring out judgment on Pharaoh and the Egyptians, that there was no light in the city, but that where the people of God lived, there was light. What does that tell you, church? It doesn't matter what the world goes through. We will be like a city on a hill. Amen. And we will never grow down. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Your faith has to be in that, not in the government. Amen. Amen. It didn't matter what Pharaoh said. It didn't matter what Pharaoh did to Israel. They were going to come out of Egypt. Right. Out because God was going to bring them out. And let me tell you something. As long as you got God on your side and God in your life, you're going to make it. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter... Seven. 
Mark, make sure you keep a bookmark or something in Luke 8. We're going to come back to it. Matthew chapter 7. Are y'all being blessed by this this morning? Amen. Man, the amens are good this morning. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. Oh, look what it says, church. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall. Say, that's me. That's me. That's me. I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate in a minute. Keep reading. For it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was its fall now notice the rock typifies us building our lives on Christ the Bible says in another scripture that the Bible says that we are built the church is built on the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone is what the Bible says in another scripture. Church, when you don't build your life on what Christ says, I guarantee you, your life will end up in shambles. Went to a funeral one time of somebody that was close to me. Well, not close to me, but close to my family. And I was listening to everything that they were saying. I'm glad they didn't, let, they didn't ask me to preach the funeral because they would not like me. But everybody was saying, oh, he was such a good person. He loved to drink beer. He loved to go out. He loved to do, and it was about partying, partying, partying. And I'm, in my mind, Brother Edward, I thought this. When he stands before the Lord, what is he going to give in exchange for his soul? Church, what you do in this life is only a dressing room for where you will spend eternity tomorrow. Amen. I'm going to say it again. This life is only a dressing room for where you will spend eternity tomorrow. And you can make all the money in the world, and you can have the biggest house in town, and the nicest cars, and have the most expensive clothing in the world. But let me tell you something. There are some things, like I always tell y'all, that money cannot buy. And money cannot buy you eternity with Jesus. Right. Amen. 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 You better know Amen. Jesus. Amen. Notice what it says. That those that built their life on the sand, they fell. But notice, I noticed something when I was reading it this week. Look at verse 27, the very end of 27. And it fell, and what? And great was its fall. People that don't build their life on Christ will fall. But great will be their fall. You better build your life on Christ, church. Amen. His word. Amen. On what he's telling you. Because let me tell you something. You can be a rock solid. You, how many of you know that when the, a, a, as high as a building goes is as deep as it goes into the ground? Do you y'all know, know that? If However high it is is how deep the foundation goes. Why? Because he keeps it steady. Let me ask you this. How, how deep do your roots go in Christ, in, your, in Christ? Let me say it again. How deep do your roots go in Christ? Pastor Larry, how do I know if I'm deep or not? Because when a storm arises in your life, do you start whining and complaining? Or do you have faith? Think about what I'm saying for a minute. You ever see people that any little thing that happens in their life, they get all worked up? I got to take my medicine because I'm getting stressed already. <laughs> you, you, what are you getting stressed about? Because you don't got no gas in your car? I'll give you $5. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we stress about the littlest things. I've done it, Mary. I know. And God's always come through. <coughs> but church, when you don't build your life on Christ's word and what he has said, your life will be taken away. And your house that you built everything on, not literally, I'm talking about spiritually and emotionally, everything you built your life will be washed away. 
You know why? Because you're not anchored in Christ. That's right. Let me tell you something. I consider myself a blessed man. I do. But when I lost my mom and dad, I didn't know the Lord. And it hurted me. I spent my I spent last night thinking about that. Me and Jamie were talking about my mom and dad last night. I got a little tear eyed thinking about it. Does it hurt you sometimes? Of course. I'm only yes. human. That's right. We're all human. But one thing I can tell you is that I've learned to build my life on the rock. Amen. Amen. And even though sometimes emotions get me and I make kind of a little move a little bit. You ever have you ever had like a good house and when the thunder roars your house kind of like rattles? But you know it ain't going nowhere. Right. It's built it's built solid. That's right. That's where you have to be. You may get shaken up a little bit, RJ, but don't worry about it. As long as you're in Christ, you're going to level out. Amen. And you're going to be all right. Amen, Amen. somebody. Amen. That's the way you have to build your life on Christ and what Christ has said. The next thing I want to tell you is to realize, number two, realize that you're not alone. Amen. Number one, you build your life on his word and what he said. And number two, you realize that you are not alone. Look at, uh, go back to Luke chapter 8, verse 23 through 24. It says, but as they sailed and he fell asleep, as, but as they sailed, he fell asleep. Who's the he? Jesus. How do you know it's Jesus? Because it's capital H. Look, I just taught y'all something right there. Right. Those that don't come on Thursday night. Every time you see capital H, it's referring to the Lord. As they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on, on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Do you ever feel like Jesus is asleep in your trial? Man, I've been there once. You ever ask yourself, Lord, where are you in this? I've said it before. How many times have you prayed and you feel like your 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 prayers are just hitting the ceiling and they're just coming straight down? You start questioning your faith. Yeah. Is God even really real? Because I've been praying and it don't seem like I'm getting an answer. And you say, God, I'm doing what you want me to do. I'm doing it the way you want me to do it. Where are you at? Have you ever called somebody and said, me, me, me. this call cannot be completed because this, <laughs> this number is no longer in service. <laughs> God is the sound. I won't do it no more, Jamie. <laughs> Listen to the repeat. You ever felt like that? Israel. The Bible says the people of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, God brought them out of Egypt. Listen to what I'm going to tell y'all. God brought Israel out of Egypt. He blew the waters back, right? And they walked through dry land. And, and the Bible says that they were praising God with tambourines and rejoicing and all that. Brother Richard, and then in the very next chapter, if you read, well, not the very next chapter, but a few chapters after that, you know what they start doing? They start complaining because they're hungry, like me sometimes. <laughs> How many of you ever seen that sneakers commercial, right, where they all oh, mad, yeah. and then they take this, this buy the sneakers, and they're all happy? That's me. <laughs> Amen? And so what do you do? The, the people of God, I mean, the Israel, they saw God do everything for them. Bring them out of Egypt. And let me tell you something, church. When Israel came out of Egypt, they didn't even come out broke. They came out rich. Because the Bible says that they took the, the gold and the silver and everything that Egypt owned, and they took it as their own. Let me tell you something. What your enemies do to you, don't worry about it. God will bring you out on top. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about what people say on Facebook. Okay, one more one. So the Bible says that Israel, they went to the Red Sea. They saw the Lord open the Red Sea, and they got hungry. And you know what they started doing, Lord? They started complaining. Does the Lord not care that we're hungry? That has he brought us out in this wilderness by, by the hand of Moses to just allow us to die? We've all done that. You come to church, and you're praising God. Oh, Lord, 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 you really been good to me. Lord, and you're crying. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and you're worshiping, amen? <laughs> Holy Spirit, fill this place. <laughs> right? You're singing it. I mean, you say, 
man, that was a power. You tell your into your family and your powerful. I felt the Lord. And by Wednesday night, you're like, where is the Lord at? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, church. Yeah. That's right. You know why? Because you like Israel. You've forgotten how far the Lord has brought you. That's right. Amen. And let me tell you something, Melissa. If God did it the first time, I guarantee you he'll do it again Amen. and again Amen. and again. Amen. 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 But here's the thing. He may not always do it when you want him to That's right. it. Amen. But he will bring you out on the yes, other side. Yes, Amen. 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 Look what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Make sure I keep Luke marked. We're going to come back. It says, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but say it but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. No matter what Paul or the apostles went through, they always focused on the fact that they were never alone. Pastor Larry, but it's not easy. Welcome to Christianity. That's right, amen. I'm going to say it again, so make sure everybody hears me. But Pastor Larry, it's not always easy to, say, to realize God's, God's with you. Welcome to Christianity. Amen. Because that's how your faith is strengthened. That's right. Amen. You're never alone. Jesus said in Hebrews 13, 5, write it down. In Hebrews 13, 5, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now let me get a little scholarly on you. The word for never in the Greek is ume. Ume is made of two words. U means no. Me means never, never. So the word, listen, it says in Hebrews 13, 5, it says, I'll never leave you. The word never is ume. So what is it actually saying in the Greek? It's saying, I will never, ever, 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 ever leave you. Ume. Say it, ume. It's a double negative. Let me give you another one. How many know the Bible says that God will never remember your sins? In Romans 5, uh, Romans 4, it says, I will never impute your sin to you. You know what the word there is in Greek? Ume. What is it saying? I will never, ever, 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 ever remember your sins again. It's an emphatic, definite, never. What am I saying? What I said earlier, you can take it to the bank. He will never leave you. Even when God seems like he's quiet, God is always there. Amen. And you know where he's at? Put your hand over your chest. He's right here, living on the inside. Amen. Listen to me. I'm going to help y'all. Stop looking to the sky when you pray and start remembering that he's right here. Amen. And he dwells right here. Amen. Let me tell you something. Y'all know when we worship and you feel the Lord? Right? You feel the Lord. God's not coming down. He's, he's already, he's coming out. <laughs> he already lives in each That's and every it. one of us. That's it. Amen. Hallelujah. He's, he dwells within each and every one of us. Amen. And you have to realize, church, that you're never alone. Yes. The children of Israel, I mean, God's people in Luke 8, they thought that God didn't care. You're sleeping over there. Don't you care that we're failing? But the whole time God was with them. Yes. Right. He had never left them. The next thing I want to tell you, number three. Two more and we're done. Look at Luke chapter 8, verse 24. Same story we're reading. What does it say? And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. Number three, when you find yourself in the midst of a storm, realize that he hears your cry. They were being obedient to the Lord. And when they found themselves in that storm, what did they do? They cried unto the Lord. And he heard them. Amen. Their cry woke the master up. Amen. What a powerful thing. I love that. Woke him up. You want to know what moves God? It's not your prayer. Or not your worship. Uh oh, I'm going to help you. You know what moves God? Is when you realize you can do nothing on your own. 
and everything you have depends on him. Yes. Amen. That is grace. Amen. Amen. They cried unto the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Who do you cry to when you need a, when you're in a situation? Come on. Sometimes we spend all our time calling everybody on our contact list on our Android phone or our iPhone telling them our problems. And not one time have you ever prayed about it. All you've done is complain about it. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Amen. You know what you say? I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just going to let Jesus take care of it. But have you asked him to take care of it? <laughs> you may let him but take, you may know you need to let him, but have you asked him? See, we subconsciously just think it's just going to happen by osmosis. It's just it's just going to fall from the air and everything. No, Jesus said you have not because you ask not. Oh, that's Amen. Good. Yeah, right. You have not because you ask not. Amen. People that are sick, why is God allowing me to be sick? Have you ever asked him to heal you? Just, just think about what I'm saying. Yeah. Have you ever asked him to heal you? We tell everybody our problems rather than God. And let me tell you something. <coughs> tell people about your problems. That's fine. But listen to what I'm going to tell you. Tell people that are going to pray for you. Yes. Um, Not people that just want to be in your business. Yes, amen. <coughs> amen. Just think, think about that. You telling your co-worker and your co-worker don't even go to church. What's she going to do for you? Nothing. No. Nothing. Oh. They don't pray. Good. Now listen to me. I understand that people that don't love the Lord can give some good advice. I would admit that. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But you need people that are going to pray for you and stand by you. That's why, church, you need the body of Christ. Amen. That's why you need a church. Amen? Amen. I hear people, I said it before, I, hear people, I, I get so frustrated when I hear people say, I don't need to go to church. You don't have to go to church to love God as long as you have the Lord in your heart. Oh, you're right. You don't need the Lord. I mean, you don't need church to, to, uh, to be saved. But you need the church to grow. Amen. 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 You need the church to, to mature. You need the body of Christ. Amen. The first people that you, listen to me, the first people that should know you need prayer is people in this church Amen. that you can trust. Because we're all a family here. Amen. And we should be able to lift one another up. Amen. But you're too busy telling your drinking buddies. And they don't know Jesus. And really, they need to be crying out to Jesus for themselves. Amen. Amen. You're wanting them to pray for you to get better, and they need to be praying for themselves to get saved. Yep. Amen. <laughs> Are y'all understanding? Let me tell you, I have people in my life. I don't call them friends, but they know me. And when I talk, when I talk to them, I never talk to them about the Lord. And you're probably saying, Pastor Larry, how can you as a pastor not talk to them about the Lord? Because number one, I value what I have inside of me. And I'm not going to throw it to people that are just going to waste it. That's right. That's so you know what? We'll just talk about football game. But then I have other people around me who I love. And I talk to them about the Lord. And I talk to them about things that are going on in my life. And we interact back and forth. And we pray for one another. Why? Because I know I can trust them. I can be trained. Sometimes, church, you have to guard your heart yes. from people that you let in. The reason why some so the reason why you always say I can't trust nobody. There's no such thing as friends because you let everybody in. That's right. <laughs> Learn to guard your heart yes. and invite the right people into your life. That's right. But Pastor Larry, I always think that they're good. Well, you know what? You need to ask the Lord to give you wisdom. There you go. Yes. To show you, you should allow that person into yes. your life. Yeah. That's the key. I tell you, church, there are still good people in this world. Yes. I don't care what anybody says. There are still good people in this world. Yeah. And my friend over here, Pastor Jamie, is a very good friend. Pastor Jamie helps me to the bathroom. Pastor Jamie helps me put my clothes on. Pastor Jamie loads me in the truck. When he's off, he cooks me lunch. He, he takes me to go to the grocery store and buy groceries. There are good people in this world. Oh, 
You just have to look for them. Amen. Are you with me? I'm not saying don't have people that don't know the Lord in your in your life. I'm just saying be careful and be cautious with people like that. Now, look what it says in Psalms 120, verse 1. It says, I in my distress I cried to the Lord and he heard me. Listen, listen to what it says. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. Oh, I'm going to blow some of y'all out of the water. Do you know why this was written? No, does anybody know off the top of their head? They wrote this prayer because somebody was talking about them. <laughs> okay, let me say it again. The reason why he said, in my distress, I cried to the Lord, and he heard me, because people were talking about him. It didn't say that he got on social media and Facebook and said, I know there's people out there that don't like me, but you know what? The blankety blank with you and all this kind of stuff. I know I have haters in my life, but people are just going to hate. Or some people like to talk, but they're never going to uh, say it to your face, dot, 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 just saying. <laughs> oh, I've been on Facebook for a long time. Amen. Y'all probably say, how can he know all these things? I, I'm a pastor, but I know the real world. Come on now. I know. I, come on. If you're brave enough to say just saying, just say what you're talking about. Right? Yeah. You're always going to have haters. But haters are going to hate. Amen? That's what people say. But notice the scripture. The Bible says that they were talking about the people of, of God in this scripture. And what did they do? They prayed about it. When people are talking about you, you know what you should do? Pray about it. Amen. When you're at a restaurant and you know somebody's been running their mouth about you, don't say, oh, here she comes. <laughs> oh, here they come. I better leave before we start throwing down right here. Y'all gonna have to get me out of jail. <laughs> There's people like that. But you know what you need to do? You need to pray for them. That's right, man. Maybe they are jealous of you. That's all right. But don't let their poison poison you. That's right. Amen. Amen. You have the health from the Lord yeah. to keep you away from all that poison. Amen. There's people that there's people that don't like me that are other pastors in this town. I was told this week by somebody that baptism didn't count at the New Covenant Church because y'all got baptized outside <laughs> and not in a church. <laughs> somebody said that this week. Amen. That's what I said. Did you hear what Yvonne said? Yvonne said, John the Baptist was baptizing in a river. And another thing I want to make clear to y'all is that pool that y'all got baptized in had never, ever been used. I did that out of respect. Not that I'm saying you can't be baptized in somebody's pool, but I wanted to at least give y'all that. That that pool had only been used for that purpose. Amen. Church, let me tell you something. This is not the church. Look around. Everything you see, the lights, the screen, this table, these chairs, this is not the church. No. Right. The Bible says you and I are the church. Amen. And if, let me tell you something. If this building burns down, we can still go to the Amen. civic center and have church. Amen. 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 Because let me tell you something. When we first started, Sister Mary can tell you, Escobar right here, and, and Sulema and, and Mary Alice, when we first started having Bible study at where me and Jamie live now, the Holy Spirit would move. Amen. And people would be crying at my house Amen. and touched by the Lord. That's how Brother Edward started coming to my house on a Thursday night. Brother Edward can tell you, at my and Jamie's house, we used to have people sit on the floor. Yes. Yes. That's how packed it would get. Yes. We had a Bible study. Y'all were just in the house. That's right. But it don't matter where you're at. When God's there, that's all that counts. Yes. Amen. Amen, somebody. Yes. So people talk. That's right. Don't worry, I hear what people say. Pastor Mary and Pastor Jamie preach grace because they want the people to do whatever they want to do. I never said that. I've never said that. But church, let me tell you, I'm not your God. I'm only your pastor. 
Amen. And like I always tell you, when you walk out that door, whatever you do is between you and the Lord. Amen. And if you want to go to the dance hall and get wasted and drunk, do what you do. But please don't tell people you go to New Covenant Church. <laughs> <laughs> but now if you're being a light and you're respecting your boss instead of cussing your boss, then you know what? Tell people you go to New Covenant Church. Please tell them you go to New Covenant Church. <laughs> What, what am I saying? People are going to talk. People are always going to say whatever they want to say. Let them talk. Jamie said, we were joking. Jamie said, make an announcement that we're going to have a Halloween party in October. <laughs> he was just joking. He was just joking. Jamie said, make an announcement we're going to have a Halloween party. And I said, yeah. I said, we, I said, we should say the theme of the Halloween party is going to be horror movies. <laughs> so we're asking everybody to pick their favorite horror movie and dress in the costume. <laughs> And I told Jamie, can you imagine if we would do that? We would really be out there in the newspaper. Don't go to New Covenant Church. They're really wicked over there. <laughs> but you know what, church? It's not like that. You cannot care what people say. I have people that talk about my family. Let me get real with y'all. And I'm not going to say everything, but I just want you to know the thing. I hear people talk about my mom and dad who have been dead and gone over 20 years. And they still like to throw in my face the life that they live. They don't realize, Mary, that it tears me to pieces when they tell me things like that. What am I saying to you? Whatever my mom and dad did, the life that they lived, I don't care what you say or anybody says, they are still my parents. Amen. 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 And they were young, and they had a lot of growing up to do. But I can tell you one thing, we never lacked food. We never went without. They always took care of us even they may have problems of their own. People talk, church. You just got to learn to play it off and move on with your life. Amen. 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 One last thing. is in Luke chapter 25. I mean, Luke chapter 8, verse 25. It says, But he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying one to another, Who, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water to obey him. Y'all see that? So Jesus wakes up, calms the storm that we just read a minute ago, and then what does he say? Where is your faith? The fourth question is going to be the hardest for y'all to work on. Is whenever you find yourself in a storm, number four, ask yourself this. What can I learn from this storm? Because they went through the storm, and what did Jesus, what was the object lesson? Where is your faith? Now let me say this. I want everybody to listen to me very carefully. I do not believe that God causes trouble in our life. But I believe that God can work everything out for the good. If we love him and trust him. Yes, amen. I'm going to say it again. God doesn't cause trouble in our life. But God can cause all things to work out for the good. Amen. Amen. I hear people saying, well, yes, Larry, God can cause trouble. Because look at the Old Testament. Now, let's look at the Old Testament for a minute. How many of y'all know that pe the people of Israel, that they what? When they were disobedient, God would stone them. Yes. God would kill them. I mean, God would drop people left and right. His own people that would be killed. But why? Have you ever known? Have you ever wondered why that is that way? And then Jesus comes around and talks about love everybody, but then he's killing their people being killed by God in the Old Testament. That's why you get to come on Thursday nights because I explain all that. In the Old Testament, they were under a different covenant. Yes. There was actually three different covenants in the Bible in the Old Testament. There was a kingship covenant, a vassal covenant. What's the other one, Pastor Jamie? Uh, there's another covenant. There's three of them Shalmona? that they were under. The what? The Shalmona law? No, no, that's the law. But they were <laughs> under the kingship. They were under a covenant with God. And you know what? Under the old covenant, it was based upon their obedience. They had to obey, and then Christ would, God would bless. If they disobeyed, God would have to punish them. Why? Because of the covenant that they were under. 
But you and I, since Jesus Christ's death, are under a new covenant. Amen. And so we're not under a covenant. Listen to me. Listen to what I'm going to tell y'all. We are not under a covenant of blessing and cursing like they were in the Old Testament. You and I are under a covenant of blessing. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to do this real quick. Give me five minutes. Let me show y'all something real quick. Some of y'all that are new. RJ, RJ and Jamie, can y'all stand right here? Please. Real fast. Grandma, I'm going to use you so you might want to put your stuff down for a minute. RJ is going to represent Jesus because he got the long hair of God, okay? <laughs> Jamie, stand over there in the middle aisle. Or RJ, stand right in front of me and face Jamie. Now, Jamie represents the old people of Israel, okay? He represents the old people. They, had, they came to just walk close to RJ, and they approached God, and they made a covenant with God. And God told them, God told us Jamie and the Israel, okay? Y'all want to make a covenant that way? Let's do it. If you're obedient, I'll bless you. If you're not obedient, I'll curse you. And that's how it went throughout the whole covenant. Are y'all with me? How many of y'all remember last year I taught on the high priest? Yes. Okay, yes. this is where I'm going with this. Now, now what happened at the cross? So, let, wait, let me back up. So the covenant is between who? God and man, right? Yes. Listen to what I'm going to say. The covenant is between God and man. And under what covenant? Under the old covenant or the old testament. Yes. Now, what happened when Jesus died? Well, this is what happened. Grandma, you and Jamie step back and or lock arms like y'all are walking down an aisle together. Jamie is now Jesus. And my grandma wants to get into a relationship with God. So you know what Jesus tells God? I will go in covenant with you, Father. Yes. And based upon my obedience, you will bless Gloria. But if I'm disobedient, you will curse Gloria. Now, let me ask you a question. Has G did Jesus ever be disobedient to the Father? No. no. So who was the covenant? Under the old covenant, it was between who? Man. God and man. Mm -hmm. But under the new covenant, it's between what? God the Father and Jesus, Jesus Christ. So you and I cannot be cursed. Why? Because we're not in covenant with God. Jesus is in covenant with Amen. God for us, and we are Amen. only the beneficiaries. Amen. Give them a hand clap. Amen. Amen. If you want to know that message, I preached it. I'll burn you a CD. Amen. But I preached on it one time. I wasn't here for that. And you know, you were not here for that, brother. You were not here. I think we used Hopi that one time when we did it. I remember Hopi. Now, or, let me read two scriptures and I'll be down way over time. Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for the good to those that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Do you see that? Now, everybody reads the scripture. Everybody says, oh, God will cause all things to work out for the good. Now, stop. You're reading it wrong because that's not what it says. It said God will cause all things to work out for the good to those that love him. That's the criteria. You have to love the Lord, and he'll cause all things to work out for your good. Amen. And anyways, we don't, what the Bible said, we love him because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. Just, just, just know that God can cause all things to work out for their good. Look, when I lost my parents, we didn't know the Lord at all. My family didn't know the Lord. But you know what? My family started going to church. And you know why I'm here? Listen to me. And I, let me say it, and I'm going to explain it. I am here because I lost two people that I loved. What am I saying? I'm saying what the devil meant for evil, God turned around for the good. Amen. And even though I had been through a loss and my grandmother had lost a son and all those things, we're still here to show forth that God is a good God Amen. in spite of everything Amen. that we've been through. Amen, somebody. Amen. Now, let me show you Romans chapter 5. They say, y'all not ready for lunch yet? Romans chapter 5, verse 3, <laughs> verse 3 and 4. It says, not only that, but we glory in tribulation. Oh, Lord, help me to you. We glory in tribulation. We don't like it. Some of y'all need to just want to mark that out of your Bible right there. We glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Amen. What am I saying? Number four. What can you learn from this? Amen. But listen to me. Believe God to move your situation. But when God moves the situation, did you learn anything from it? Because you know what? That storm you went through, that trial you went through in life, it may have grown your faith. 
and may have learned how to persevere and not give up so quick. Amen. There's, I've seen people come to this church. Listen to me. I've seen people come to this church, and they're and, and as soon as they get saved, their life starts breaking out in hell. And you know what they do, Melissa? They don't come back because they said, well, I started going to that church, and I thought my life was going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. Your life is going to be blessed, but the devil's going to fight you. The devil's going to throw things at you, at you to make you doubt and start questioning your faith. That's when you have to say, you know what? I'm going through this storm because the Lord is teaching me not to give up. Amen. So that I can grow in my character. Amen. Some of you go, listen to me. Some of you go through impatient situations because you're an impatient person. And maybe the Lord is trying to teach you patience. Mm. Maybe you have a bad husband that gets on your nerves, but every time he says something wrong, you're quick to open your mouth. Maybe the Lord is teaching you to hush your mouth and be quiet. Uh-oh, come on now. Maybe you're used to cussing people out when they say something about you, but now you're learning how just to, okay, I'm going to walk this way. <laughs> Are you with me, church? Amen. There's something that you can grow in it if you allow the Lord to grow you. Amen? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Amen? Amen. Why don't we stand? I'm 10 minutes over time.